Chapter Twenty of Iracema, The Honey Lips, The Legend of Brazil, by José de Lencar, translated by Isabel Burton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Twenty, The Moon Waxed Rounder. Three suns had passed since Martin and Iracema had been in the lands of the Pichiguaras, lords of the banks of the rivers Cabocin and Acarau. The strangers had hung their hammocks in the large cabin of the great Jacauna. The brave chief claimed for himself the pleasure of being the white warrior's host. Pochi abandoned his wigwam that he might accompany his brother of war to the cabin of his brother by blood, and to enjoy every moment that the sea warrior could spare to devote to friendship from the love of Iracema. Darkness had already left the face of the earth, but Martin saw that it had not left the face of his wife since the day of the combat. Sorrow lives in the soul of Iracema. The wife's gladness can come only from her husband. When thy eyes leave Iracema's, tears fill them. Why weeps the daughter of the Tabajaras? This is the Taba of the Pichiguaras, enemies of her people. The sight of Iracema still sees the schools of her brothers staked round the Caissara. Her ears still listen to the death song of the Tabajara captives. Her hand still touches arms dyed with the blood of her fathers. The bride placed her two hands on the warrior's shoulders and reclined upon his breast. Iracema will suffer all for her warrior and lord. The atta fruit is sweet and pleasant, but when bruised, it sours. Thy wife would not that her love sour thy heart. She would fill it with the sweetness of honey. Let calm return to the breast of the daughter of the Tabajaras. She shall leave the Taba of her people's foes. The Christian marched straight to the cabin of Jacauna. The great chief was joyful on seeing his guest arrive, but joy soon fled from his warlike brow when Martin said, The white warrior is going to leave thy cabin, great chief. Then there is something wanting to him in the cabin of Jacauna. Thy guest hath wanted nothing. He was happy here, but the voice of his heart sends him to another place. Then leave, and take all that is needful for the journey. May Tupin fortify my brother, and bring him back again to the cabin of Jacauna, that he may celebrate his welcoming. Pochi arrived. Hearing that the sea warrior was going, he said, My brother will accompany thee. Will not Pochi's warriors need their chief? Unless my brother desires that they go with Pochi, Jacauna will lead them to victory. The cabin of Pochi will be deserted and sad. The heart of the white brave's brother would be still more desert and sad without him. The sea warrior left the banks of the river of the herons and marched towards the land where the sun sets. His wife and friend followed his steps. They went beyond the fertile forest range where the abundant fruits breed a swarm of flies from which it takes the name of Mirwaka. They crossed the little streams which discharged their waters into the river of the herons, and they sighted on the far horizon a high mountain range. The day expired. A black cloud seemed to be advancing from the sea. It was the urubus that feast on the dead which the ocean throws up on the beach and return with the night to their nests. The travelers slept at Uruburetama. When the sun reappeared, it found them on the banks of the river which rises in the Serra Gap and descends winding like a serpent into the plain. Its mazes deceive at every step the pilgrims who follow its tortuous course, for which reason it was called the Mundaú. Following its cool banks, marching on the second sun, beheld the green seas and the white beaches where the murmuring waves now sob, and then raging with fury, break in flakes of foam. 
the eyes of the white warrior dilated at the vast expense his chest heaved the same sea also kissed the white sands of the potengi his cradle where he first saw the light of america he threw himself into the waves and reveled in the thought that he bathed his body in the waters of his native country and his soul in yearning for it iracema felt her heart weep but soon her warrior's smile reassured her meantime pochi from the top of a palm tree arrowed the savory camorotin which sported in the little bay of mulao and prepared the mokin for their refection End of chapter 20